pass one of those to me. I'll have I take credit for getting him here. <laughs> I told you. I know. Okay, so we're still analyzing the story of the of the um, Tower of Babel, and it's chapter 11 of Genesis. The beginning is chapter 11, and um, in the art scroll, it's on page 49. But we're thinking about, we want to think about the story in general. We began last week, and... Uh, Whenever it was, we began in the past that we'll we're going to continue. What I thought to do today, at least to begin, is to think about, um, there's a great commenta commentator that we used to read a lot about, uh, we used to read a lot, the, the Barbanel. And Barbanel was a fasc fascinating uh, character. He was a great sage and a, t a Talmudic scholar but also a great um, commentator on the Bible, also a great uh, financier. He was the finance minister of the King of Spain when the Jewish people were, when, when at the point when they were expelled from, from uh, Spain in 1492. And he has a very interesting way of commenting on the Torah. First thing is, he doesn't necessarily comment verse for verse, but what he does is he begins and he, he begins with a certain story and he asks a series of questions, sometimes 10, sometimes 15, sometimes 20. And then he gives us his thesis and then he goes back to explain how his thesis answers those questions. And he's very analytical. And what he does here today, he's gonna to do the same thing, not, gonna, not that many questions too, but what he does today is when he thinks about what is the problem with, what is the story of the, of the um, Tower of Babel, what he also does is he does, his, he does a sort of a, a uh, collection of what all the other commentaries say and then each one he says why he rejects them. So it's interesting to read. I think I'm gonna to try to read it, read it sort of inside and just get a feel because it's interesting because you get sort of a digest of all the commentators through and then he attacks them. And then he, he suggests his own thesis, which you may or not, may not agree with. I'm not sure I love, um, I love the idea, but his analysis is unbelievable. So I wanna just take a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes and we'll, uh, just try to go through his questions and how he rejects the other interpretations and how he puts it through, forth his interpretation, which is, which is very creative. Good morning. Um, so first I'm gonna, so I think we'll start with that. If that's okay, we'll do a few minutes. We'll see how this works. So I brought I brought I brought my little booklet here from uh, Barbara Nail. If you can see this, uh, for, for now it's fine. If you can see a small print, right? It's not as big print. Just his questions. Uh, well, actually, this, his analysis goes still here, and then his proofs. His proofs begin over here, and then he goes. So you see what I'm saying? He's not. He's not. He doesn't hold back. I when I went to the store for the first time to when I went to the first to the store in Muncie to buy that Barbara Nail a few years ago, maybe ten years ago. So I walked into the store and I asked uh, the shopkeeper. Um, um, could you have a Barbanel? He says, what, do you want the full set? I said, yeah, I want the full set. He says, what do you have time to read that Barbanel? <laughs> he's like, why, you read that Barbanel, do you have the time? Okay, but well, we're gonna try to go through this as quickly as possible, but I, again, I like it because his analysis is unbelievable in the story. His interpretation is very creative, and also you'll see a digest how he attacks all the other interpretations. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Don't hesitate to interrupt me and, um, and uh, ask any questions or comments. So here we go. He starts like this. He says, the story of the Tower of Babel, everybody's confused. Nobody can find, inter everyone, everyone's lost. And again, what's the, what's, the, what's the essential problem, if you remember from last time, what's the essential problem of the Tower of Babel, understanding the story? The essential problem is that it's not clear what is the sin, right? The Torah doesn't say what the sin is. That's the essential problem. So he says, all the Mepharshim, all the commentaries, both the old and the new, are totally confused. They have no idea what is the great sin that because of the, that sin, these people were um, received this punishment, which is that they were scattered and their and the languages were 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 confused. And it's not just enough to think about what the sin, but you also have to figure out how is the punishment 
a, a um, um, correspond to the sin, right? It has to be a consequence. It's not just a random punishment. So the punishment has to fit the crime. So number one, we have to figure out what the crime is. Number two, we have to figure out how the punishment fits the crime. Thank you, Mark, for the Tower of Babel. Puts us in the mood. He's got a Tower of Babel in the back. Okay. So he says there's many medrashim. There are many interpretations, but they're not consistent with the simple meaning. Okay. And he starts beginning. He says, he starts. Some say, Rashi quotes it, that they want to, they want it to go up to heaven and battle God. Right? That's what, that's, that's what Rashi says. That's a classic medrash. And it wasn't just building the tower, but the tower was a way of going up. I'll give you this one. But the tower was a way of going up to heaven and battling God. That's what, that's what some, some commentaries say. He says, this is um, impossible to understand, very difficult. How did the entire world come up, agree to something so foolish? It's a shtut. It's foolish. And it's also an impossibility. You can't fight, how could you fight God? Right? It's not tangible. It's not a person. So he says, it's not rational to think that everybody agrees on this foolish idea. That's in, it's an impossibility. So he doesn't like the Medrash. And in addition, he says, amongst those people, there was Noah, Shem, Aver, and Abraham. There were smart people there. And how could it be everybody falls into this idea um, that, that you can fight God? That's his question. Now, if you're going to say, so that's one problem. Another problem, it's getting Talmudic. If you want to say that indeed that was the sin, then you have to sit down, Buba. If you want to say, if you want to say that that was their sin, that they really was an idol worship and they were fighting God. So then he asks, so we don't understand how could they all agree with something so foolish. But if that was their sin, then you have another question. The question is, what, why, why was the punishment so, so um, light? The punishment for idol worship should be so, mo- so much more severe, right? If the crime is so terrible at the fighting God, the punishment should have been, should have been, should have been much worse. That's, that's his other question. But, you know, Rabbi, yeah. Another component could be, if they were worshiping idols, they have no interest in fighting God because he'd be irrelevant. Right. So one question of, of, of um, um, one question of what, what, there's a question to get into the mind of the idol worshiper. What's the relationship between the idol and the one God? And there's many sources that explain, verses that explain that even the idol worshipers, or at least some of them, believe that there was ultimately um, the one God who began everything, but then he delegates to the idol worshipers, to the, to the, to the other idols. And then if you could align yourself with a specific idol or the specific force in nature, then you can go against the idea of the one God because he's too removed anyway. So it's possible that they're serving idols, fighting the one God, possible, the worst crime. If that's the worst crime, that's what's so terrible. So first of all, how could you fight God through building a physical tower? It's an impossibility. But even if you get back, back, past that problem, then you have the other problem. Why is the punishment just dispersion and not, he, he says, you should, you should be fire and brimstone. Fighting God should be much worse. Go ahead. It says God is one. That means to me one, and then there's one way. Yes. And so this, and and their language was all one. one. Correct. And so God gave them the appropriate thing. He dispersed their language. They got confused. They couldn't speak right. one language right. anymore. Right. They went a whole bunch of different ways after that. So it was actually the perfect okay. Okay. kind of. There's different, like uh, I said. I mean, you know, there's different perspectives. No problem. I think that that, yeah, that, that could be, but I'm just saying, he's saying if the crime is so terrible, then dispersion should be not enough. That's his argument. Let's see what he said. Let's continue. Next. The other interpretation is Rashi quotes that too, is that people were afraid that there's going to be a flood and they will climb the tower during the flood. That's the two classic Medrashim. He has two big problems with that. Number one, Amongst the people who built the, 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 the tower, of course, you have Noah and his sons. And Noah and his sons are the patriarchs of all those families. What does Noah and his sons know about a flood? You need an ark. You need an ark. But also, God promised there will be no more flood. There was the rainbow. So at least some people there understand that there's not going to be another flood. Now, the way it's described is everybody, it's not even going to say, everybody was, was united about, about, about this project. Kala Aretz, the entire land was Safahat, one language, one language, and Varimachadim, and one words, meaning it was a united front. Everybody in society was united around this project. Now, if the project, the fundamental principle of the project was to avoid the flood, then at least there should be a minority of people, certainly the patriarchs of the families, who should say, this is a waste of time because we have an oath from God passed down from Noah that we don't have, we don't have a flood. Go ahead. That there won't be a flood. 
this is what I've read. Yes. Okay. Um, that not all civilization was wiped out because we still see, we still see the, the, the what is it, the Anakim later on. Correct? Yes. Yes. You know, and there's story, there's stories that, you know, they hung on to the side of the ark. So, um, you know, these guys were obviously still around. I mean, at this point. Yes. So, you know, I would like to find your thoughts on that, you know. So I, I want to say that 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 even if um, you say it didn't hit every area of the world, and there's a debate whether the blood was all over the world, there's only a certain region, there's a debate whether well, it was they, in Israel. Survive, so, the survivors is another point, but I, I want to say certainly amongst the builders of the tower were the descendants of Noah. Right? So, so, so the point that he's making is the descendants of Noah they, sh they should understand, they should know, at least some of them should know of the divine oath. Now, certainly you're saying that there are other people, I think the people who survived uh, by other means of the flood, they're certainly traumatized. So maybe they're, they're, they're from the group who would want to build a tower. Well, these are, the, these are very specific groups. Correct, these are correct. These very specific groups. You know, these guys are like, I mean, you know, they're, 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 Yeah, described as, as giants, correct. But I understand that there will be some people traumatized and they want to build a tower. His argument is, that it can't be everybody. You have a united society, everybody. The word is very machadin. They all got together with specific words, with united words. They all have a united project. Says that Barbara Nail, somebody there should have got up and said, this God, what about the promise of God? There won't be a flood. That's one problem. Now, if you want to say, well, they didn't believe in the promise, he has another question. What's his other question? His other question is, we discussed this last time, the worst place to build a tower is in the valley. Okay, so we thought of this, but so did that Barbara Nail. Right, so we have the two. We have if you want to avoid a flood, you don't go to you don't you don't go to a valley. So with the two main um, interpretations of the medrash, he attacks from both angles. He has two questions on each of the two main interpretations. Um, now, if you're going to say just one moment, well, one moment, then he says. Now, by the way, he says, where did the people emerge from the ark? You're going to say they they emerged from the ark in the val in, in Babylonia. No. They emerged from the, from the ark on tall mountains, the high mountains of Ararat, somewhere in Turkey. Okay, So they knew about the mountains. They should have understood that that's the first place they saw it. They felt it. That's the first place that, that, that uh, the, the driest place is the highest place because that's where the, the first landed and then the rest of the water recedes. Also, they also had ready-made stones there. If the purpose is to avoid a flood, you go into Babylonia, to the valley, where there are no stones, is, is, is a waste of your time. Actually, it makes sense go ahead. to build the tower. Go ahead. Land up like New Orleans underwater. Right. Well, where there's a, where there's a, a chance of flood. Yeah. That's where you build the tower. No. You got the mountains already. You just go. Yeah, up but the if you don't need to build if anything. you're trying to avoid a flood, you go to the high to the high right. high altitude. You don't build anything, and you correct. Go, but they decide to be dumb, so they build so, the so, tower. So, so maybe the there's something else. Actually, logical. so you're saying it's not logical to build a tower in a low place if you want to. You're trying to be high to avoid a flood. It's not efficient. To build a tower in a low place, but, you build so a they tower. Did a stupid thing. So that that's what, or you could say that the, that that wasn't their intention. That's that's what questioning that we're trying to get. What was their intention? Intention. So again, we have two major interpretations of the Medrash. To because we have to figure out what the what, what what's this Torah telling us? What's the lesson to us? You have to understand. Torah tells us a story. There has to be a lesson. We know there's a consequence. We know there's something wrong. If we cannot figure out what was wrong, then we cannot learn from the experience. So if the problem was idol worship, okay, so the takeaway is not idol worship. If the problem is that God, uh, they didn't realize that, that they thought they were afraid of a flood, they didn't, they didn't believe in God's promise. Okay, so we know that. We have to define a sin to be able to figure out what the lesson is. Go ahead, Neil. But if you're afraid of a flood, you know that a boat is going and a tower isn't. So it doesn't make sense to build a tower. It doesn't make sense to build a tower. Unless you want to say, I want to be high, and that's okay, <laughs> but, but that's not a mountain. But I get, I get, I get, but I guess, I guess the, there's a tower, of, uh, there's a flood, uh, there's a limit of how many people you can fit into a, into a, into a boat, into an ark. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> that's true. Go ahead. Rabbi, hi. Uh, okay, Jill, go ahead. Us... Okay. Okay. This, the story itself is a metaphor. It's not to be examined as, I mean, how many people. It was the reigning paradigm of the time. So everybody doesn't have to agree, but it influences everybody in some form or other. And the paradigm has to do with the structure of society. It's unitary. There's a top and a bottom. And um, this is not what apparently um, what God has wanted. He made all the people of Israel 
a listen to the word. So they're going to be a kingdom of priests. The ideal is not of uh, the structure of uh, one ruler and everybody goes along. Yes. It's about yes. a different metaphor. That's a good point. You're saying that a tower represents hierarchy, represents everybody's invested in one project. If everyone's invested in about one project, by definition, there has to be a hierarchy to be able to achieve it. And that is the dangerous because God would want more of a diverse setting, diversity. And that is certainly that is certainly um, that is certainly a good interpretation. That is certainly a good interpretation. But again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go after the classic commentators, uh, classic interpretations, question them, and then see if a new one could be produced. But what your interpretation is 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 a perfectly good interpretation. Maybe the senator they want to make a name for themselves. That was my question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. That's all good. It's all good interpretations. All good interpretations. Make, make a name for themselves. But you're getting what exactly what does that mean? What exactly does that mean? I want to make a name for myself too. That's why I have a. Uh, not me, but that's why I have Instagram accounts. Not me, I mean the other person, but I'm just saying, so is that is that a terrible sin? So all the people that are Instagram should be dispersed, like what's going on? We invest billions of dollars in, in marketing and in, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, branding, right? Everybody wants a name for themselves. So is that in itself a so sin? They really build the that's my question. Barbara now has four pages on this. Look at when you say your head is in heaven, isn't that what we do when we're in Korah? Yeah, are we, yeah is, is it a problem to put your head in heaven? Yes, yes, yes. So we, again, there's so many interpretations, so many ways. Um, Have they experienced miracles before this happened? Well, some of the people have experienced the flood. So they experienced natural disasters. So that's why the Medrash is very logical that these people are here to try to protect against a, a, a natural disaster. But Barbara Neal says that cannot be the only interpretation because if that is, they're very inefficient. You don't build in a valley. A real God and that's what that was the first doing. interpretation. But how could you find uh, that? I mean, that God is not a tandy. You're going to climb up to heaven. You're going to climb up to heaven. Yeah, they're people, they, they, they think the way they think. So it could be, but there must have been some wise people there that could give some influence. Again, the problem is that, that like Jill says, that, that it seems from the verses that this is a communal project. Everybody's invested. The Medrash says even Abraham was invested in this project. And even Shane, this, this, was, this was something that took over a lot of people. Really? Yeah, because again, it, you will see in a minute that, that it's not so clear that it's so terrible. And also to, to make themselves a name is also to make themselves a purpose, as you thought. So maybe a name that's is good. Maybe that's good. Yes, yes, yes. You're asking a good question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Vicky. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to actually, Jill already uh, kind of stated that this is the question that I had from last from last time. Uh, first of all, what was the one language? Was it Hebrew? We assume so. We assume so. Yes, it's the word. Uh, yeah, Rashi says Lashna Kaidish. Rashi says the Holy Tongue. Yes. So that's, in that that's, case, that's going to be important to that Rabbanel's interpretation. Go ahead. Uh, so in that case, because they are so different, and all of a sudden, miraculously, they reach the uh, the consensus. So there is probably the question that I raised this, the last time. Uh, there is probably a ruler that dominates everybody else because they are all very different, right? So that that's yeah, what yeah. it's not even a punishment. It's kind of a trying to solve this. It's a premature yeah. unification. Okay, so you're saying, you're saying exactly similar to what Jill said and that Robert Nell was a smart man, he came up with it, but he also disagrees with that. So this, let's put it in the Barbara Nell's words. Says that Barbara Nell as follows. Um, some people say the sin is as follows. The Ran, the Ran Pidesh, the Ran was um, Rabbi Nissan of, of Girundi. That's the Hebrew pronunciation um, from, from Spain. He says as follows. He says the sin was not building of a city. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is to build a city and a tower, you have to have one king to rule over the entire city. Uh -huh. Now you're gonna have one king ruling over everybody. That king may be an idol worshiper, which he was Nimrod, but the tradition is that Nimrod was the king and the idol worshiper who was the king of that region. So you're gonna have one person ruling over the entire society. You wanna put the entire society in one place. The king will be our idol worshiper. They will not allow, they will impose their belief system on the entire society because you only have one, one society really. And there will be no a possibility to, um, um, to, for, for someone to, to discover the truth of God like Abraham. Abraham was persecuted. So what did he do? He left his, his home country. If there is only one society, 
That's what the Ran says. That's the Ran's idea. Third idea, not the Medrash, a thousand years later. So the Ran says, look, if you're going to have one society, then you have one person controlling the propaganda of the society, one person controlling the philosophy of the, of, of, of the society, no, and they can impose their, 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 their belief about idol worship. We're giving no possibility for theological opposition to arise. And that's why God says, this is terrible. We have to disperse them. In other words, the sin is not building the tower. The sin is that if you're building a tower and you're gonna have one society, there's, 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 um, there's danger that there would not be any room for people to discover God on their own because the, 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 the government the top, the government would control, control the, the belief system of that society. Nimrod this is very was interesting because the Nimrod was the head according to the tradition. Vicky said this, Jill said this, Iran said this. Abarbanel doesn't like it, go ahead. What are the possibilities of not Between Sounds to me like a wonderful thing. So what's the sin? Yeah, the king, you, know, you, get, you get the kingdom of God. Uh, it sounds wonderful. Yeah. Sounds like we should all be building towers. Eternity, like we do in New York. In other words, what's so terrible? Okay, Maybe so, this is not a sin. Maybe this is just a problem that he's trying to solve. Because no, God, as God, God says, he comes down to see what happened. And he says, he says, he says, he says, he says I better disperse them because then they're, they're, what they want to achieve is going to be successful. Okay, if it's a positive, if it's a positive me, if it's a positive goal, then very good. Let it be successful. God has to intervene. God doesn't often intervene in history. God intervenes. So there's a problem. Okay, so that was the first third interpretation by Vicky, by Jill, and by the, the Ron. A barber nail 300 years after the Ron says, I don't like that reason. Why not? Let me just give it a, go ahead. Go ahead, Neil. Maybe the, maybe what God said about it is that they speak one language, but not the one character. What's wrong? So, so what's the problem with one language? Unity. But Isaiah says in the end of days, everybody is going to call God with one language. That's the vision of, that's the vision of, of, of Mashiach. But I'm, I'm referring to the punishment. So the punishment is that they have multiple languages. Okay. And therefore the sin was that they had one language. Uh, but how could you say that? What's wrong with one language? That's the ultimate. That's the goal. That's the future. We should all be speaking the same language. We recognize God in one, in, in, with one word. If you believe their problem was idol worship, then you say you, you, everybody's united about idol worship. That would be a problem. But if you say that idol worship wasn't the problem, and you say the problem is just the unity, unity per se is, is a value. So, so the Iran <laughs> says, says unity is dangerous because what's going to happen is if you only have one society, right? You, it's, like, it's like the people, you know, you want, a strong, you want a strong king, a strong monarch, or a strong executive. And then the problem is that when a new king will come up, right, all the powers that you gave to the first executive now could be used to the negative. So the Ron says the problem is you appoint a king, you make a tower, you make a king, you make only one society with a leader, that leader turns bad, that leader turns turns idolatrous, and there's no room for dissent. Nimrod and if there's no room for dissent, bad. dissent. Nimrod was Nimrod bad, correct. From him. Nimrod. And the other like, look at China now. Look at China now. Look at China, can make a lot of money, but don't dare speak Very up successful. Christ. Yes, yes, yes. So the Ron says a beautiful interpretation. Jill, you're a very good company. You're a very good company, but again, the Ron says, what's the yeah. problem with this interpretation? Again, again, Ron's interpretation, I want to say focused. Ron's interpretation is two problems. Number one, he says, this is even more distant, from my opinion, than all the other ones. This, even though I think it's very compelling, the, 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 Barbara now says, this is the worst of them all. Why? Because the verse does not mention explicitly that there was a king. We know it. We know there was a king. It's wonderful. But the verse, if that's the key, that you have one powerful leader that will, that will impose his philosophy and not allow any dissent, and that's the great sin. In, in Hebrew, there's a, there's a phrase, ha'ikar chasem na sefer. The main point is missing from the book, right? Because sometimes you have people say, we think this is the argument, that's the argument. But, but if, if so, the main point, you missed the main point. The Torah missed the main point. The Torah should have said, by the way, there was a powerful king. The Torah is not afraid to talk about kings. It talks about Nimrod in the previous chapter, chapter 10. But chapter 11, with the story of the of the tower, actually doesn't make mention of the king. In fact, it sounds very uh, self-rule. It sounds very, um, 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 I was going to say, I was going to say, um, uh, like the Soviets. It sounds like the rule of the people, right? In other words, the people get together and make a plan. That's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like there's one top-down leader. So the, my, my, even though I think... Anarchy, but it could, but it could also be that every, it's democracy, not democracy, but the idea, like the Soviets said, that what we're doing is the the people are going to decide, right? And 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 uh, so in some sense, it sounds like it's coming from the people. I wouldn't call it anarchy because anarchy is everyone's running in his own direction. 
here, it seems to me that everybody's united around the same project. It's hard to refer to it as anarchy. But whatever the case is, it's a beautiful interpretation. Says that Barbara Nail, the problem is that um, um, the problem is the verse doesn't say so. That's one problem. Next problem. If the king, if God does want, uh, let's assume that's the case and God wants them dispersed. Okay, God wants them dispersed. Why does, um, why does God have to change their language? What he should do is inspire one person to rebel against, against the king and you're done. Make a rebellion. Does it happens all the time. He yes, it say says Hashem came people. down. Let's read. Let's read the verses. He changed the language. According to the Medrash, the dispersion. Okay, let's see. Let's read the verses. I'm getting old, so I have to check too. One of us. Confuse their language. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's look at. Let's look at the text. 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 Verse five. Okay, so you're right. Verse six, it says confused, right? And Hashem said, behold, they are one people with one language for all. And, and this they begin to begin, begin to descend and they're confused their language. Okay, wonderful. That they should not understand one another's language. They can't speak to each other. And then if you look to verse nine, that is why it was called Bavel, because it was there that Hashem confused the word Bavel, Babylon. Bavel means to, live, um, to mix up. If you have a pot and you're making a cake and you have to mix the ingredients, is leave low. In, 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 in biblical Hebrew, in the Hebrew of the Mishnah, Bila, Livlo. So here, Hashem Balal, Hashem confused the languages of the whole earth. And from there, Hashem scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Now, it's interesting that both in verse 7 and in verse, verse 9, the, scat, the, changing, the, the confusing of the language precedes the scattering. So that's why many people believe that they scattered because the, because the language changed because they couldn't communicate. So each person now makes their own group with the people they can communicate with. So, the, so this, the, 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 the changing of the language was the cause of the scattering. Okay, I don't wanna spend the whole day on this. So I wanna go, go, go a little bit quicker. Um, again, if the, again, if the point is that there will be one king and that's what God doesn't want, so God should inspire someone to rebel. You don't have to make this whole thing of changing all the languages. Now, the other problem is, is also a problem. There were kings who were super, who, who ruled over superpowers who ruled all, all over the entire earth after, after that. Look at Achashverosh. 127 countries. So you have one terrible king, one king, potentially it's a danger that he rules everybody and he will crush all dissent. Isn't that a problem? And God doesn't intervene. So if that itself is the problem, how come God allows that to happen to other, other, other times? That was premature. That okay. at that time, that was premature because we clearly see three different kinds of ways of, uh, of perceiving the world from three sons of Noah. It was very close to the conception of those of this to the split so that's why we needed to confuse to get a better mix beginning you're right you're making a good point if you have to defend iran it's very easy to defend him in other words against the second question second question is in the beginning you have to allow for for more freedom for, so people can so abraham could emerge once the jewish people emerge once the ideas of, of monotheism emerge then it's not so dangerous to have a powerful king i agree if you have to if that question itself is not is not is not the most strong question, but his first question on the run is very powerful, and that is, and that is, um, and that is, um, why is it not mentioned in the book that there's a king? If that's the issue, for the main thing is missing from the book. Okay, so what we therefore he says, therefore I have to find a different interpretation to explain, um, to explain. Oh, this is so funny. Um, to explain this interpretation, and he says, I am not going to do now what I always do and add all the questions that I have on the story. Why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of the length. So I spoke long enough. He doesn't want it to be too long. So I'm not gonna ask any questions. He's gonna jump right in to his interpretation. Okay, but I like to read this just to show there's three basic, two interpretations of the Medrash, which he asks two questions on each one. Then he brings the Ran and asks two questions on the Ran. And this is how you do. Before you're gonna add your own interpretation, you have to really, uh, analyze and see if the other ones are not, are not satisfactory. So he's very analytical in that sense. I thought that was very interesting to watch how he develops. Now he has his, his idea. Now he develops his thesis, which I'm going to put out there because it's very, very interesting. Um, we may not like it. And therefore, there's other interpretations that are going to, which I'm going to mention right after him. But you got to give him the credit that he's very, um, he's very, he's very thorough. OK, so here we go. He says what I think the problem is as follows. They came with the same mistake of 
Adam and Cain. This is a continuation of the same story of Adam and Cain. Now, the Barbernell's perspective on Adam and Cain, both Adam and Cain, from this pers- from his from, from from this reading, he says, "What's the problem with Adam? Adam, God gives him. Or going back to the sin of the tree of knowledge, God gives him all the all the trees you can eat. You just cannot have one." And basically, he says, when a person pursues um, pleasures more than what is necessary, that is a, a potential for sin. That's unhealthy, and it's not going to lead to good things. And he says that's what was the, that was the, that was the essential sin of the tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge, a person has to know that you have what you need and what you want, and they're not exactly the same thing, and you can't confuse the two, and be satisfied with what is permitted for you, and there's no need for you to go after and get every last pleasure in life. That's, that's the moral teaching that God places in the Garden of Eden, because otherwise you'll never be happy, right? If you don't learn to be satisfied with your life, you'll never be happy. So he says that is what, that is that, that is essentially the sin of the, of, the goal, of the tree of knowledge. Now we know we have so many other interpretations, but for the purpose of this discussion, that's, that's, that's the sin. Now, what's the sin of Cain? Cain, again, Cain is going and he's getting into development beyond the natural and beyond the necessary. Compare Cain to Havel. Havel is a shepherd. A shepherd, what is he doing? He's doing very natural, right? Just, 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 great, just, just taking care of the sheep. And, but agriculture is already development that's more than what is necessary. And his thesis is that when God sees when people are too invested in development for the sake of pleasure, beyond what is necessary, that would seem that would that is potentially problematic. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna spell we're gonna spell this out. And that's why he says, look at all our ancestors. They all tried to be the patriarchs and 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 uh, King David and Moses, they were all shepherds. Why? Because they prefer to be in nature than to be in what he calls um, the, malach, the things that are malachuti, which in modern Hebrew means artificial, right? So he says there's natural and there's artificial. The more development, the more artificial, the more it represents what a person wants beyond what they need, what you need for, for, for survival. And he says that is, that is a potential problem. And therefore he says, if you look at all Cain's descendants, all of them, no matter what they're doing, the ones that are mentioned in chapter, I forget, four or five, they're all creating new but he says motarot means the things that are that are luxuries, and these are the people who play me use, make me music, and they make weapons. And creating chaos. One second, one second. Development. We we we're again we're, in, we're we are live in a we are in a capitalistic society. For us, development is very good. So we're going to have to deal with that in a second. But from the perspective of, of the Barbernell, the more the closer you are to nature, the holier you are. The more you say, I need to pursue pleasure, and therefore I need to develop. That is a potential problem. And he says, when a person is too invested, when society is too invested in development and and expanding their desires and possessions, that creates um, robbery and that creates um, uh, and that creates murder. And that's why it's no mistake that Cain was the first murderer. Why? Cain was the first one trying to develop beyond nature. So if you're trying to develop, then you see you're trying to, to increase your resources, then your brother is a threat to you. Now, he says like this, the problem is with the people who came out of the ark, they should have not placed all of their efforts specifically into um, the building of their physical development, but they should also think about the, they should also think about spirituality. And the fact that they, that they did not do so is, is the sin. Now, why does the Torah not mention the sin? Says the Rabbi Neil, because it wasn't a sin. It could develop into a sin. With Cain and Hevel, it de- with Cain and Hevel developed into a sin. So the way he's saying that is God looks, hi Chara. God looks and God sees where are we headed? Okay. Come on, I'll take <laughs> He's No, he's fine. He's fine. She's fine. God looks and says, where are we going with this attitude? <laughs> he sees an attitude where there's no spirituality. Nasa, Lanu, Shane, like Neil said, we're making a name for ourselves. But how are we going to make our name for ourselves? Just, just development. And he says, there's no sin. Why is there no sin? Why is the Torah not mentioned the sin? Because there was no sin yet. But there's a threat. Potentially, if we follow this path, we will end up with Cain. So that's one point he says. But I want to say one more thing, and then we'll just finish up what he's saying here. Yeah, yeah, deterrence is before. Yeah. Now I would want to. Uh, 
should have seen that they don't know what they're doing or they're dumb. One second. It's not a sin to be done. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, give me just one I mean, second. Is it a sin or is it a sin? I, I think they're dumb. I don't think they meant to do anything wrong. Oh, There's next question. There's one more question he has to deal with, and he goes back to the beautiful, the beauty of the story. He says, if it's so, if gathering and building a city is so bad, how come Hashem did not prohibit it for the Jewish people? Hashem should have said we all have to be in agriculture, which we were. Most of us were, but it's not a sin in the Torah. Don't build the city. You know, according to Rabbi Nel, his thesis is that the development is the problem because when you're going to develop a society where they're trying to develop, make making a big city, making a tower, that's the only value of 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 of, of graining assets that, according to the Barbanel, is going to potentially lead to one second to infighting and the death and murder. If that's the problem, if that's the thesis, and if that's true, so how come the Torah does not does not prohibit it to the Jewish people? So here he says like this. He says. Um, that the way he basically says that the fact that Hashem allows it is, is that Hashem there's a class of mitzvot that Hashem takes something that is not ideal but then Hashem says let's do it in the right way and he brings an example of the monarchy right monarchy was not ideal but the Torah says you can have a king but you have to limit the powers of the king so he says what, what the Torah, God doesn't have to say building a city is, is prohibited but God says build a city but with all the other mitzvot of learning to care for other people and learning to care for the poor, et cetera, et cetera. So that will make sure that the building of the city will not have the negative effect that had, it would have had had we not had the Torah and all our efforts are built are, are pegged to development. That's his idea. And I just want to say why I found this so beautiful because what he, sa he says is like this. What does it mean that God dispersed the languages? What did God, they, when we were kids in the Cheder, they said an angel came at night and made them forget their Hebrew and put Japanese into your head, Chinese into my head, English into your head, and German into your head. But that's not what happened, says the Rabbi What happened? He says something very interesting. Everybody's united. Everybody's united. Everyone's united, you know when? Until we create the first invention. We create the first invention. There's no word for the, for the new invention in biblical Hebrew. In the holy tongue that they spoke that was passed on to them, there's no word for the new invention. Let's say brick. There's no word for a brick. Brick's a new invention. So how do you name, so now what's the name for the brick? Now we're fighting in all development, who gets the copyright? Whoever names it gets the copyright. That's where all the infighting happens. But God gave us free will to make a choice how we use all these assets. Correct. So you could go in and steal the CBS or you could go in and pay Correct. for what Correct. you buy Correct. in CBS. Correct. And maybe that's why the whole thing happened. So God could teach us how to make God could teach solution. us that you have to have a balance. You have to develop, but if your whole purpose is development, to be able to exp ex expand yourself, you end up like Kain and his descendants. Everybody would be like that. Correct. Some people would, some Correct. Would so God, God, therefore, God says we cannot have a city and a tower before you have the Torah, before you have morality. But again, the, the, what, what, I, what I love about this interpretation is because it gives a beautiful interpretation of how the dispersion of the language happens. It begins by people breaking off. Why are they breaking off? Because they're fighting over the copyright. And whoever names it, owns it. And this is a very, so when, when, to build a tower, so the brick is the one invention. That's why they went, by the, this explains why they went to the brick. We discussed this last time. They went, they, they, went, they went to Babylonia to show that they can create new technology and with technology, they can solve all their problems. So they create this brick, but a brick is only one thing you need to build a tower. You have to have many inventions to build a tower. Every invention needs a name. Every invention needs a copyright. Every invention is now people fighting about who is gonna name it. And that causes the thing to break apart. Yes, but Adam gives names to all the animals, to all natural phenomena. Now, a name for the animal is, according to the Kabbalah, Adam looks at this natural phenomenon and says, what is your spiritual source? And the bit, we believe that the, that the Hebrew language, each letter is an energy, and the order of the letters is also which energy is more dominant. And Adam has this great wisdom. He's able to see within the creation down here, he's able to see what is its spiritual source. But that's all natural phenomena, which have a spiritual source. But what happens if something is the source is the human creativity? So now there is no name in biblical Hebrew. Even till today, there's a there's a there's a there's a, a group of people in in Israel that their their job is to come up with new names for new that for new technologies. Of course, it comes from Hashem. But the point is, this is something that we create, so that if we're creating it, it's not in nature. 
If it's not in nature, there's no name for it in biblical Hebrew. Human beings have to name it. Just like we create it, we have to name it. Now the question is, how do you name something? So every invention, there's fights about who, who's going to name it, what the name should be. And that's how language disperses, because every person gives a different name to the same item because everybody wants to say, I created, I'm in charge, I own it. And what that does, that tears everybody apart. And, and that's how, ultimately, what's, what's, what's interesting here is it's self-destructive. I just, Robert Nell doesn't say this, but what I'm seeing from here, if your only purpose is development, then you're not going to be able to create, have the cohesiveness ultimately to be able to succeed to build a tower because you're going to fall apart within, from within because you don't have a deeper moral value. Go ahead, Steve. Well, another angle. We'll figure it out. So go ahead, put it out here. <laughs> uh, but, uh, maybe this is this is with respect to political philosophy. Uh, maybe this is an argument against central government. Where I, mean, I, I think the philosophy, Greek philosophy, of purity, I think it is in the ninety third letter or whatever. I don't, I don't know. All of that, but, but he argued that this. Society was to build a house in the woods where your nearest neighbor was two miles away. And you could trade with him and so on and so forth. But, uh, but, but Syracuse was against urban. Uh, I living. think. And, and this, this was um, McCain's pin and able issue is the, the urban versus the rural. Yeah, I think that Abarbanel would agree with that. Now, you have to understand where he's living. Abernell is living in Spain, okay? So the most developed in the 14, 1490s or 1480s. So he's living in the most developed nation on earth. And then he sees what they fall to, right? So they're, they're expelling the Jewish people. So what does he take away from this? What is all of the advances of, of culture and science and technology of the time? What, is it, what, what has it led to? And he looks around, I think, I think you cannot separate this philosophy from his own life experience. And he is disillusioned by all of the by all of the developments of Spain because he sees, and therefore when he reads the Torah and he says, tower, city, development, there's a problem with that. What's the problem? It's exactly what he says. Well, I've heard that, that argument before with respect to and I, I think it was from Leo Strauss. Could be, could be. I didn't read Leo Strauss, but I'm sure I, I think it's pretty obvious. You don't have to be a wise person to figure it out. Even I can figure this out. I think it's just understanding the context. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. Barton Hill associates this passage with the discussion of Cain earlier. Yes, yes, he says, he says like this. He says, not only he, he, he says, not only he builds a city, but he also names his son Hanoch. Let me see what he says. He says like this. He built a city and he called it, its name Chanoch, right? The verse says he built the city called his name Chanoch. By he named the city like he named like the name of his son Chanoch. We we discussed that. That was a little, a little bit of a problem, right? We discussed that. We discussed that. But what does Chanoch mean? Chanoch means education or educated. So he's named. So we discussed that that his priorities are wrong. He, he names he names the city like he names his child. So maybe the child and the city are equated in his own mind. But the Rabbanel says like this, he says, he, the city was his educational product, um, um, project. What did he educate his descendants? He, dis, he educated them, you have to develop, you have to invent. Never be satisfied with what nature gives you, you have to invent. And therefore they all become inventors. He says the children of Cain, all, they continue their, their custom of their parents to follow the work, who calls it motariot, the works of, of, the, of the luxury, as opposed to the necessity, which is nature. Luxury is development. And he quote, quotes, Yuval was the father of all the people, musicians. Tuval Kayin, the father of all. So basically he says that when Kayin builds the city, this is an extension of his idea. If he wants Kayin, we discussed this Kayin, his kinyan, his possession. He wants possession, he wants development. But he says he also educates all of his descendants to do the same. Now, we know what descended about. We discussed that before, that Kayin's lineage leads to the corruption that ultimately is wiped away. Now, God says we're going in the wrong, that wrong direction. If people are just invested in, 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 in development without having any moral foundation to it, 
what's going to happen is we're going to end up with with corruption and we end up with the flood again and therefore we has to ask that we have, we have to disperse it but i think that in some sense what's happening here is also that it's ultimately going to self-destruct because according to the Barbanel, there was no secret angel coming down changing everybody's language god says i want to disperse the language but what did he do according to the Barbanel, did nothing he just watched the people a fight in fight over the development and Ultimately, if development is all you're doing, that Robert, I think what the Barbanel is saying is if there's no moral foundation um, to society, then the development ultimately will implode. I think, uh, I don't know, depending how long, maybe God fat, may hasten the process. It may, may take a thousand, hundred years, maybe take a few hundred years. The moral lesson is, according to the Barbanel, the moral lesson is that you can't, I, I know we live in a capitalistic society, so you're gonna, if I say again, anything against the development is bad, but, the, but, but the, what the, the moral lesson is, that if all you have in life, if the only thing society wants to achieve is development to be able to better the life and give people luxury, if that is the bedrock of society, if that's the value of society, that is negative. And that's ultimately going to lead to, to, uh, to negative, negative the developers, things. Developers, you know, they support the Torah scholars. So now you're telling me what that Barbanel says. Once the Torah was given, once the Torah says, that we have, we teach the values of the Torah. Now you could have this concept that in itself would have been problematic. Now it could be checked by the values of the Torah and now it could be used for the good. But that, so that's, the, that is hard to do. It's hard to do, it's hard, challenging enough. And like Steve says, some people say, if we all lived in our little, a little, a little, little field and then the closest, the closest guy was two acres, ultimately there would be less murder. Ultimately there'll be less crime because you don't see enough people, you can't rob the bank because there is no bank, right? So, 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 so in some sense, in some sense, that Robert is saying in a perfect, in some sense, maybe that would be the, be, the, better, the better system. Of course, Syracuse says this, everybody, look, every system has, every system has, has pros and cons. I'm not saying, I'm not making this utopia, but what Robert is saying, the fact that, people, that a person says, I cannot satisfy with what I have and I need more, which in the West we think is a wonderful thing because it leads to development, and it does. But if that's all you have, you end up with Cain, you end up with Adam and Eve who are eating the last, the, the one tree they can't have, they say, no, we have to have every last tree. And Cain says, I need to get every last possession and develop everything, and that's the only foundation for existence. That, according to the Barbanel, is dangerous. Now, I just want to say one thing before, before we go. We, we still have 10 minutes. In a minute, before you go, lest, lest you think that the Torah is anti-development, I'm going to give you another interpretation that says the exact opposite. So hang on, don't go anywhere. Go ahead. Now go ahead, Jill. Uh, the okay. words, and let us make a name for ourselves. Um, which, you could read it that way, that God is not included in that, in that statement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and me, to make a name for ourselves is to create the names for the for the new discoveries, oh, very uh, good. as you very said. Good. Name for ourselves. If I am the first one to figure out a new invention, I name it, then my name becomes 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 remembered. And and uh, that's what's and, and that's I am I am godlike. Yes. And uh, God is not mentioned. And it's yeah, and, and it's not only that. I mean, I think you already started answering my question that I had for a while. Um the, the question is. How, how Hashem dispersed everybody. I mean, you cannot force, this is like a, a person has free will. So the process of dispersing everyone is similar to the process of um, um, the dispersing, uh, confusing the languages. Yeah. I mean, I've worked in information management long enough and I, to know that until this day, we fight over the names and definitions of everything. Sure. So that's that's gonna so hopefully. that's more, more like a confusing confusing like a clashing egos. That's what it seems to be. Yeah, with and all our problems, clashes with the free free will and Hashem's choice. How can Hashem disperse everybody? That probably uh, they they uh, by confusing languages they disperse themselves. Right, but I think Hashem hastens the process. In other words, I don't know how long it took for the project to fall apart, but it seems like. It seems like it seems like um, um, it seems like it would happen. It, it seems like it happened. Look, I don't know how long it took. It could be it could, took a few decades. But the bottom line is that I think you mentioned in today's society. Today's society, even though of course there's egos involved, but I think we I think society as a whole there is a foundation of morality. There is a foundation of values to some degree, and therefore 
and therefore we still, we're still united as a society. If not, we would have crumbled like the Soviet Union did. In other words, ultimately you cannot, the, the, the Abba point I think is, is he doesn't say this explicitly, but I think that's what he's saying. He's saying ultimately if all you want is greed, if a society that's only built on greed, ultimately was self-destruct. Go ahead. Would I be wrong to read this as in some way foreshadowing the Exodus story? You know, let us make bricks and burn them in fire and build towers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there is, I have to look for it. I have to look for it, but I'm pretty sure that there are Arizal writes that the people, the Jewish people who were, I have to look look for it. So I'm speaking too too much, but I think that the, uh, the people, the, the, the Jewish people who were building for Pharaoh, their souls are reincarnated from the generation of the building of the tower. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, they're connected and they're elevating it. And uh, I have to go back and check. That's the short answer. But yeah, there's cer certainly the Kabbalah draws the connection because it's almost too 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 clear to ignore, right? Yeah. Okay, so, go ahead. Um, why in Israel are many people called Nimrod? Nimrod means the rebellion. Rebellion. I guess. I guess a lot of people they're rebels. Israelis are rebels. You're not going to find any religious Jews named Nimrod as, unless they became unless they became religious later in life. It's not a common name. But in Israel, at some point, I think they like the idea of being the rebel. I think the, the Zionist movement um, rebelled against pretty much everything that they. And it's not connected to the Genesis question. It is Nimrod. Nimrod. But, but but Nimrod. I don't know. If it's, I don't know if it's connected to the Genesis account. We don't know enough. I don't know, but but the point is, Nimrod is, is rebelling against God, but the idea of rebellion was very important to the to, to the to the to the early Zionists because they had that they had they tried to move people away from the old way no. of thinking. Okay, because we because we came a little a, 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 a little hard down on development, and I don't want you to go and say and start to that. Go ahead, you know, explain. People explain. are not all bad people, you know. This is a negative. Sometimes Hashem gets you confused and brings you to the bottom, so He can bring you to the so you get to the top. Sometimes you have to make big, big mistakes. Yeah. And learn from those mistakes, and maybe that's how this came down. So, so what's can't be these people are all bad people. It's not a question of bad people. It's a question of it's a question. Of, it's not a question of bad people. It's a question of what what is the in a society, every person in their society, you have to really ask yourself, what do I really want? What are my goals and what are my values? And if my, if there's a, change. one second, if there's a fundamental problem with what society wants to achieve, right? That, that, that's going to be negative. If all people want is development to the point of greed. But they were confused. Not everybody, not everybody wanted. They were taught, so Barbara would say, they were taught for generations, beginning from, beginning from Cain, who built the city. And, and they were taught to generations that the only thing that matters in life is how much you could develop, how much you can acquire, and how much you could you can expand and create luxury were for yourself. All not all, same? not all, not all, not all. But what happens is they told each other when they said, the, the Medrash says that the people who instigate this are this, the descendants of Cham. Now we discussed this from other interpretations. Cham means heat and passion. Okay, that, so his descendants, but ultimately everybody follows because it's very seductive. And if you, if you say me for myself or for my society, what I want for myself, what only, the only thing that matters is development to the point of greed, that is potential for sin. It's not a sin. He didn't do anything wrong. That's why the Torah doesn't mention the sin. Remember Nimrod that? is in the middle between Japheth and Shem. So some Shem, didn't Shem come right away and do the good thing right away? Some of Shem's descendants moved away from Nimrod, correct? And some, but, but at did. this point, so at, the at this point, at the point of the tower in Babylon, in that valley, is one philosophy. And according to the Barber Nail, that's the philosophy that says that the only thing that matters is development. There's no morality, there's no God, there's no values. It's just we as a society together, we, what we want to do is we want to. Um, I hate to say it, we want to. Getting like this. No, I think that, okay, I'm not going to, uh, no, I, I think we can't take it to the other extreme. The other extreme is in this society, I think people have values, and to the extent that there's too much greed, you don't need me to say this because you lived through this, the percent, to, to the extent that there's too much greed, it self-implodes, right? If you want to think about, if you want to think about many times there's a bubble, right? So ultimately, things will self-implode. Go ahead. By getting back to Anarchy is a political philosophy. 
So, so I said he comes down and, and, and he confuses the language. Hey, isn't that all, isn't that an anarchy? Okay, so and, and so and so and so since every since the central government exists universally everywhere, we can't go anywhere with it. So, but I want. And so, and so maybe uh, from a political philosophy point of view, Hashem uh, confusing all the languages so that nobody understood each other, because many of us didn't understand each other. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's a, a pro anarchist argument. Okay, so that's true. I'm not a I'm not a political philosopher, so I can't address it. I can't address it. I can only address it from a layman's perspective. My perspective, or the perspective of Abar Bernal. Abar Bernal does not um, does not talk about the central leader like the Iran does. Abar Bernal is saying, forget about anar anarchy. To me, anar anarchy is um, 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 to, to me anarchy is a problem when you have a lot of people together. The Abar Bernal calls a kibbutz midini when people are united in a city. Okay, in that sense, it seems to me that at least the sages believe that you need a you need a government, even a bad one. What they're talking about, what Abarbanel is saying, dispersion. When people are dispersed in rural areas, even when there is a central government, the central government does not does not does not exert that much control because there's nothing to control. You see what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is that what what Abarbanel seems to be saying to me is that when people are spread out, it's much harder to control them. When people are together. There's going to be a central. There's going to there's going to be a central leader, and then the question is, um, is the central leader going to turn good or bad? So the Ron says the problem is that we're together. The, 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 there's going to be a central leader that's a problem, and and um, maybe anarchy would be better from the perspective of the Ron. But to me, that Barbernell is saying it's not a question of who's going to who's going to rule the city. That's a secondary question. He's saying if you give me a choice for city life or rural life, rural life is better from the perspective of Barbernell. Now we may why because. Because where people are much more, people are much more closer to nature, right? They're not looking to buy to to drive. Uh, what do people drive? To drive uh, Lamborghinis, right? Maybe they have. They're not. They're just not in that culture, right? So he's saying that with the more you get people together, the more development you get. That is potential for going down the path of kind. It doesn't have to be that way. Okay. It's centered. I have to come and give the counter perspective because I gave this perspective. I give the counter perspective. It says the Orachaim, lived more than three hundred years ago. He says no. He says the problem is this. The problem is we know God says God created the world. The Shevet Yitzar, so people should develop it. What is the danger of everyone sitting in one valley? Only one place is developed. The exact opposite. Hashem says Milu Tarets for Kivshua, fill the earth and 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 uh, subdue it, conquer it, conquer, subdue, use it for your benefit, elevate it. Now the Orachaim was also a little bit of a Kabbalist. And uh, certainly the Kabbalah believes that the sparks have got everywhere, right? So he's saying, what he's saying is the opposite approach of the Barbanel. He's saying that it's not that development per se would be the problem. The contrary, the contrary is that you're not allowing, your, when, you, when, you, when you consolidate all the development to one area, you're, not, you're leaving everywhere else behind and you're not allowing the, God's plan to, to unfold, which is people to disperse everywhere and develop everywhere and, and use the research, resources of the earth everywhere. And I would say, from the Kabbalistic perspective, and to what, what to believe in, and whether you should move to a city or move to a town or move to a suburb, that you'll have to speak to Steve, and he'll give us the the digest of all the all the um, political philosophies. But it's interesting how people over the ages will look this looked at the Torah, looked at, at their life, looked at what societies were achieving during their lifetime, and without without looking at the Torah, and I thought it was fascinating, and especially for that Barbanet, because how he analyzes every else, but also the way he puts that creative spin on how the languages were dispersed. I think that could be translated to any 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 interpretation to take that. I think that's absolutely brilliant that we're fighting over who gets the name. I thought that was great. Yeah. Go ahead. Beautiful. Yeah.
Mitzrayim is concentration. Mitzrayim is also the most developed country, in, certainly in agriculture of the time. And there are people today, people that say that it's not an excuse that that it's not it's not a mistake that slavery developed where when agriculture develops and where agriculture develops. Because if you're going to get into agriculture, you need you need to you need you need, you need um, more physical strength. So you want to exploit you want to exploit uh, um, other people to make it to make it uh, profitable. So you, you see here that development does not come back by the by the by the by the Torah by the values of the Torah. Also giving those people jobs. You're not. You're, it's not a, a negative. Balance. 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 It's not a negative thing. Balance. What 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 that Barbanel says, and he lived it. He says you can have the most developed society, but if the foundation is not is not moral, it's gonna it's gonna lead so to maybe sin. The whole purpose to get to look at the Torah. Yes. Only purpose is not to understand, make a name for ourselves. The only underlying the underpinnings. Why do you, have, you could have two, two. You could have two capitalists. One person wants to just develop and and and, ex, and expand and grow their assets for just physical purposes, and one has also a spiritual purpose, so they can better the world. Okay, so it's not a question of is development per se good or bad. It's a question of what's the purpose of all this development. And if there is no positive purpose, there's no vacuum in the world. If there's no positive reason, then the negative impulses of Cain and his descendants are going to take hold. And that's the purpose of the story, at least according to that Barbara. Are these people Jewish? No. Okay, that's the. I hate, that's the problem <laughs> no, no, no. because Jewish people are, according to the Zohar. Uh, Jewish people, even according to the daily prayer, you made us different than everybody else. Means we have so the Jewish people have a Torah, they have a conscience, they have it. Most of us, we all have all, all of us, we all have this thing that is we're still. The of good news is, the good news, we're still and challenged. No, no, no. Jewish, so they don't care no, that's not. That's a mistake. I, I don't think that's correct to say that. We're, that I don't Jewish think that's right. Because we're Jewish, we're immune. No, because we're Jewish. But I call Jewish people the people who study and like come here and try. Everybody, and everybody that's still. That's what I call Jewish people. I don't call them. The in my opinion. In my opinion, well, the fact that Jewish people. in my opinion, in my opinion, <laughs> the fact that we're Jewish and we have the Torah means that we have uh, access to the to, to, to the to the enlightenment and to the ideas. But implementing it is still a okay. struggle for everybody. Okay. But we are you're right that we have the, the advantage that we know we know what yeah, the right path is. But on the other hand, it's also heightened responsibility. So, so, so Rabbi, yes, just um, building upon how you often approach these stories in the past. Um, so, two questions How would the Baal Shem Tov interpret the story? And you often say, like, your inner tower of Babel, that would be your kind of phrase. I think if, I, if this is our inner tower of Babel, I think we have to ask ourselves, everybody, especially if you grew up in the West, everybody is ambitious, everybody wants a name, everybody wants to feel that they're accomplishing something in this world. Nobody wants to feel that they're not going to leave an imprint, right? So that's clear. Everybody wants a tower. Everybody wants to achieve. Everyone wants to develop. The question is, how do you think about that and what the foundation of that desire is? If it's just, I want to name for myself for purely selfish purposes, then it's negative. If the purpose is, I want a name for myself, Um, myself. Look at Abraham. Our irony is that Abraham never didn't want a name for himself. All he did is he called the name of God. And yet we have no idea who built the tower and we all know who Abraham is, right? So ultimately, if your de desire to leave an imprint is related and connected to a higher purpose, then you end up like Abraham. And then it's positive and then you get the best of both worlds. If it's just selfish, then at best best you may be successful, but at best that's not that's not what that that's not that's the tower of Babel. That's the negative tower of Babel. That's the negative side of, of development. If it's just expansion of the ego. So again, why do I want to? Why? What, what's what's my what's my motivation? Do I want to be successful? Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to feel that they're achieving something. The question is, what?
what's is it purely selfish or is there a spiritual purpose for that so i could transcend so i could make an impact so that i could connect to other people so that i can fulfill god's got my purpose on earth then you're not doing the power of that then you're not in the tower of babel then you're in the story of then you're in the story of abraham you're in abraham's business that's how i would think about it go ahead steve yes Eventually, and I, first Portugal, right? First, first. Well, I, I, I think the introduction is what we're defining here. Yeah. I just think this one thing is the topography of his writings and his understanding of Italy. Because it really certainly presents one set. I have to check. I, I think his commentary on the, on the Tanakh he wrote after he was expelled. I'm not sure about the Torah. I have to go back and check. Um, he does write. He does write. It's interesting that he does write. He does write when it, when it, when it, when he comments about the about the commandment to make a king, and he argues that there is no commandment to make a king. And he says, if you look around the world, wherever there's some form of democracy, it's better than the monarchy. He writes that. So he's seen the monarchy. He's seen some form of democracy, and he says he says the, the, the monarchy is not. It's just yeah, that it just doesn't David work. Was, look at King David. King David was. So that, that's but that's the that Ron would argue that's the danger. Danger is when you have a powerful uh, a powerful king, you don't know who the next guy with with central power. You don't know who the next guy the next guy will be. So re mo <laughs> relatively speaking, the, David's descendants were okay for the most part. But then the majority when, were not. No, no, the kings of 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 of, of Judah as opposed to the kings of Israel. Yeah. Kings of like, kings. I mean, how many good kings did David have? Relatively speaking, compared. David. Shlomo didn't end up very well, by the way. Well, Shlomo, Shlomo built the temple to God. Okay, listen, Shlomo's, uh, Shlomo's. Uh, <laughs> they're all complicated. That's certainly true. That's certainly true. I'm going to put it right here. Don't worry. Don't worry. But we still have a question from Vicky. But wait, everyone's free to go. We're 10 minutes late. Those who want to stay all day can stay all day. Thank you all for joining. Have a wonderful day. And God, we, God willing, next week we hit Abraham. So. So, uh, no, you can leave it here. Don't worry. No, 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 no. no. Have a wonderful day and a uh, good your meeting for Yom Kippur. Okay. And uh, I think we'll be here next Sunday. Yes. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Vicky. Uh, I don't know. Maybe my question was answered. You kind of started answering a couple of questions. The first of all, from those three sons, we have descendants of Ham, uh, Shem, Yafet, and, and, and Ham, right? So, and they all, the descendants all built one product. So just by looking at that product, Hashem figured it out whose opinion dominated by just looking at the final product, right? Is that what we're talking about? Yes, so Hashem. that. that that's probably Ham because he's ambitious and and his uh, his ego was. It's also, it's also the Medrash. The Medrash says they said one to, one man to his brother. They said one man to his brother. Says the Medrash, who's the man to his brother? Literally, it's all people said to each other. But the Medrash says that it means that Kush told Mitzrayim to descend. <laughs> Um, and remember, Egypt, Mitzrayim is Egypt, and Egypt develops agriculture. In other words, you see that the family of Ham were, 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 were very invested in the notion of development for the sake of um, moving away from nature, creating artificial settlements, artificial developments, and for the purpose of their own, own pleasure, solely for the purpose of their own pleasure. And also because of the, like, the, whose ego and whose approach to like dominated, you just look at the Tower of Babel and see yeah. that that who dominated because they, they cannot all agree. So somebody has to be stronger, some opinion. That's that's I think one of the reasons. And and you're right, because that wasn't a sin. That's why it wasn't a punishment. It was just a, trying to prevent trying to prevent potential problem. Right. right. And my second question was um how how they how they were dispersed because it's a the free will, right? So by just just separating the languages, misunderstanding leads to to uh, relocation, right? Yes. If I if I it's not just misunderstanding. If we're fighting over the the rights for this development, that brings us apart, and I don't want to live next to you anymore. Right. Right. So, so that's where you want to move away. The, the whole idea is the selling the notion that we can all be united against a collective product motivated by our greed.
but if the greed is the motivation, and ultimately you can't have collectivism because everybody's greed will overtake. So in some sense, in the beginning, it was a nice idea. We'll all build an aim for ourselves together. We'll all succeed together. We'll all put all uh, we'll all put our greed in the same pot and be able to achieve. And what happens is it doesn't work that way because right. ultimately, it's well, gonna... yeah, hopefully, we. When Mashiach comes, we're all going to have the same language and the same goal. But this one, this time, the right one. Right, and it, and again, the development is 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 positive to the extent that it's a means to an end. But that's not the only purpose of mine. Right. So the, the dispersion is the result of confusing the languages and misunderstanding. Right. That's what Abraniel says too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much. It was beautiful. Thank you, Rabbi. Take care, bye. Thank you.